What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today we're going to go into the Jet KVM. I did an unboxing a couple of weeks ago. I got this device, I was so happy to get it. Um, basically with the Jet KVM, it's a, a KVM, a small KVM that allows you to control, remote control any computer. Um, it cost about $69. They have a, uh, a Kickstarter out there and I got it a couple of weeks ago and I was totally excited because I have a home server downstairs or a, you know, server rack. And there is one server that's always constantly giving me problems downstairs. Um, that'd just be nice to go downstairs and, well, not have to go downstairs and reboot it when I need it. So um, <clears throat> this was why I bought this. Now, I bought also, here's the device. I did the unboxing. Um, but here is also another device that I bought with it. This was, and I already took this out. This is actually a PCB board where, as soon as you see it, you could, uh, you could tell what it is. Ooh, the camera's over here. All right, so it's a PCB board that basically goes into the server and, here it is, I'm holding it. Uh, you basically connect the jumper cables to the motherboard and then you connect uh, this board to, the KVM um, via serial port or via, I like to say, old telephone wire, old telephone wire, um, and it basically allows you to control the power of the server um, via this board. Now, off the bat, this does not control power. It just uh, shows you what's on the screen and allows you to mimic, like if you were standing right in front of it. However, you can't control the power options on this. When I bought this board, it made, you know, I wanted to plug it in so I could control the power. However, after realizing that it communicates via serial port, I was a little less thrilled to implement this. Um, so we're, I'm not going to actually in implement this. I, I'm going to keep this out for now. Um, and then at some other time, if I do need to put this in, uh, I have it. But for now, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to implement this. All right. So let's just kind of put this back. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, I already spun it up, uh, but I have my mini computer over here. So I just want to spin it up to show you guys uh, what it looks like and how easy it is. All right. So we got an Ethernet cord that's here. So you just plug the back of the Ethernet cord. <coughs> now, I do have a HDMI dongle here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the HDMI Porsche, obviously put it into the HDMI. And then take the USB part of it and then put it into the USB slot. Almost immediately, you could see it booting up. And it gives itself an IP address. I've noticed that when you, let's see if I could zoom here. All right, so I noticed immediately when I set it up the first time, uh, the HDMI is disconnected. For whatever reason, um, I believe you have to reboot the computer before you get an HDMI signal. So we're gonna, we could see that the IP address is 150, uh, 253. So I'm gonna actually, let's see if I could do screen record. Okay, so we switched over to the computer. Um, all right, so let's put in the IP address that we see. So 10.0.0.253. And this is what I was telling you about. As soon as I plug it in, it says, um, because it's not showing an HDMI connected here. So what I noticed is that as soon as you do that, you actually have to reboot the computer. So we're gonna, I do have a different way of rebooting into this computer or this specific computer. I use actually ConnectWise Control. So I'll bring this up so you guys can see. So that's the actual computer. So we're just going to, Reboot the computer. All 
and then it, almost immediately it switches over to connected. Oh, disconnected because obviously it's removed, it's rebooting. So we're going to close this window, and now it's going to connect, and you're actually going to see the Menace Form BIOS window, which is pretty awesome. So, uh, so initial setup, you do need to kind of reboot it first, so this way the HDMI gets connected, and you can see it like alternating from disconnected to connected. I, I'm not sure if that's normal. I hope it is. Um, and now you can see on the screen that we're connected. Now I can move my mouse in there. Now you can see on the screen, there's a little, there's, a, I mean, if I move the mouse fast, you could see the trail of the mouse on the screen. Um, but as you can tell, it, it is pretty quick. It's, it's not, it's not a bad lag that you could check and see, or, you know, it's not a bad lag that you, that would make a difference on what you're doing. Um, over here, you just have a couple of settings that you could go through. Check for updates, video settings, the quality, hardware. You could actually connect this, the access to uh, the cloud. You could sign up for a cloud account, and this way then you could access this from outside your network. Um, I don't know if I need that yet at this point. Um, you could also set a password here, so this way, uh, you know, if anybody tries to access it, you could put a password on it. There's just one thing that I really just makes me upset about this whole thing is that that IP address I cannot make static on this device here. Um, that has to be a big downfall for this device. It's something so small, so overlooked, um, but I would love to have this a static IP address, you know, because I, I think that if this thing gets rebooted or if it loses power or whatever the case is, I'm sure that IP address will change. Um, and then for me to find the IP address, like if, if this is downstairs or remote, you know, if this is somewhere where, uh, yeah, well, actually downstairs, um, I won't know. I'll have to scan my network to figure out what the IP address, the new IP address is. Or, you know, I can maybe give it a static IP address via DHCP, you know, whatever's giving at DHCP. But either way, they should have made a static option on this, so this way, it keeps the same IP ad address regardless. Um, I haven't played too much with it. I know there's, uh, so here are the extensions, the DC power control, which I do have also, but I'm not gonna do it. And the ATX power cord, that which I just showed you, which was, you know, in this box, which I'm not gonna use also. Uh, and I guess the serial console goes with everything. Um, a little bit of data here, connection status, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we went over the settings and that's pretty much it. The biggest thing is the wake online, the virtual keyboard, pretty simplistic. It just shows up the keyboard down here um, and the paste text. So if you're copying from one to another, uh, the virtual media, um, this is pretty cool. So you could either transfer virtual media to this computer or, or load it from, you know, virtually. So this way it shows up here. Basically, you could take an ISO from either the JET, you could load the ISO into the, into the JET KVM, you could load the ISO from this computer, or you could pass it to the other computer and load uh, that on the computer. So essentially, if I wanted to reboot, or I'm sorry, reload Windows on this computer, I can do it from here and not have to do go downstairs and do it, which makes it really, really cool. Um, and now you can see why I would want this option you know installed but I, I really don't feel like going through the jumpers and reconfiguring my motherboard to get this working so we're just going to give it a try for now um, so so far it seems pretty cool uh, it is running very smoothly on here um, and you know I hope to in a couple months give you guys an update on how this is doing um, and hopefully I continue to have good reviews, maybe buy a couple more if this one turns out to be really great. So anyway, I just wanted to make this follow-up uh, video because I know I did an unboxing and this was really just a quick tech review on this. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed. All right, bye guys.